Hi, Robin here. This is a video as part of the SEM course where we've already created some simple models. We created a regression model and we created a confirmatory factor analysis model. Now we'll create a more complex model where it has aspects of both. Remember you can download the R package which you need, the R software, you need Java and you need Onyx which we're going to use to create the model in. Let's now consider what we're going to do in this session. So as I say we're going to use a paper that was written in 2016 by Krizik, Knight and Robertson. Uh, it's called The Developmental Antecedents of the Facets of Psychopathy. The role of multiple abuse experiences. Now I'm going to look here at how we're going to use a summary set of data. Basically the summary set of data is going to be a set of covariances, means and the number. When you're carrying out an SEM analysis at this stage you'll see it's a very complicated model. We've assumed that various regression analyses have taken place and also some exploratory factor analysis. If you look at the paper you'll see they carried out a large number of analyses of various aspects of the data, subsets of the data. Also, I assume that they developed some type of visual framework because you couldn't have come up this with this diagram, this visual um, representation of this data set without some type of informal diagram on a whiteboard or a scrap of paper to begin with. So, first of all, I'm going to demonstrate in this video how you can use a covariance matrix rather than raw data and you'll realize that in lots of SEM books they don't give the raw data they just give a covariance matrix um, which means you can actually replicate a lot of the diagrams in the papers yourself. I'm going to create a model this time that's very complex and I say it's going to have aspects of both the contrary factor analysis that we carried out before which is also called the measurement aspect of the model and also the various latent variables we're going to include is called the structural aspect. So before going anywhere let's look at the data in a little more detail and what we have the data is a set of covariances the various variables. We have a mean for each of the covariances we have an overall sample size which isn't that large actually considering the number of variables we've got is 305 and then we've got the names of each of the variables. Onyx is very fussy on how this is laid out. The covariance matrix has to be comma separated each part and the space between them. The means, again it's a comma or a space, although you can actually just use a tab instead at that point. That seems to work as well. Absorbed variable names, that must be a tab. You can't put a comma in there, it won't work. Now let's look a little bit at the article see what the diagram looks like that Krizik et al came up with. Here's their diagram and you can see what they hypothesize is that psychopathy is measured the latent variable by these four indicators and these four indicators in our covariance matrix are called facet 1mm to facet 4mm. Next, sexual abuse. That latent variable is measured by three indicators level of penetration, force and frequency. And that is these three variables here. SM bottom X2, XM fort tote 5, SX LV TOT5. Next, type of physical abuse is measured by these three variables. The frequency Fizz, A, B, F, Q, the number of people involved, P, H, Y, A, B, P, E, R, and the maximum physical severity, PAB, L, V, T, 3. Finally, psychological abuse was measured using two variables, which was a significant care, male caregiver, hostile control, and significant male caregiver, vicarious violence. So, if you look at the paper, which I'll show you quickly now, which you need to download. Let 
we have a large section describing the methodology that they use with other results of the various regression analyses, etc. And then we come along to the SEM model I just talked about. So we're going to try and replicate this SEM model in Onyx using just the covariances. Let me just start up Onyx. So you've saved the Onyx file locally. Double click on it and it comes up. Get rid of tip for the day. Change the size of the window. And we also need some data, which I showed you on the website. I saved it locally. And the data set we need, a set of covariance, it is called KRSTIC underscore 2015 underscore CV dot text. We drag that and place it in the model window. And we'll put it just there. Now we need to create the model window. That was the actual canvas of Onyx I was talking about there. So create new model. Create empty model. Enlarge the window. As you can imagine this can be quite large for uh, the number of variables we have. And just as they do in the Bake Off shows, I'm going to show you one I've done in Onyx so we can compare what we're going to need to get in the end. So this is from the paper. And remember we've got these variables that we've got to equate to these names. Yeah, and what I've done is created my Onyx diagram and you can see there are the names. So I advise you either to write on the original diagram or print out this page and then you can compare. So first of all I'm going to concentrate on the psychopathy side of the the model that was in the paper, the right hand side. So we all need a new latent variable. Create variable latent. Click on it and we'll call it psychopathy. And we'll set its residual variance to one like we always do with these latent variables and I find that's the easiest way. Fixed parameter that should be fixed to one automatically. There we are. Right now we want the four indicators that relate to this latent variable. And if you remember they were called facet 1mm -M to facet 4mm. -M. We can click one, hold down shift and click the next three, then drag onto the model, and there we are. Now we create the paths, regression paths, or factor loading if you're talking about factor analysis, which we are here, onto the psychopathy latent variable. So right mouse click and drag. 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 And we want all these to be estimated. So we click on the first one, hold down shift, next one, next one, next one, right mouse click and say free parameter. It'd also be nice to see the standardized scores. So while we've got them selected, we choose custom eyes path, show standardized estimates. And there we have our values. We also have R square values for some if you hold over the cursor, the roller ball, which you can compare to the model in the paper. Here is the model from the actual paper, and we can see that they are quite remarkably similar already. I'm going to carry on like this until 
I complete the diagram to appear just as it does in the final paper. So what I'm going to leave you to do is create the rest of this so it looks like this diagram and then we'll come back to it. Remember that the latent variables I always set the error variance to 1. Welcome back. Here is the completed model. I've actually cheated and opened a model I'd done previously. The problem with doing that is that we lost all connections with the data. But you don't have to link all the variables again. If you click on the bottom of the data window, right mouse click, and it says send data to model, and it asks you which model. I say yes, and now it's linked the data to the model. Now, I wonder how well you got on. <laughs> First of all, I want to compare aspects of this model to that of the original diagram in the paper. So here we are, let's look at the psychopathy area first. This is in effect a confirmatory factor analysis and that's why it's called the measurement part of the model. So what we have here is psychopathy which has a partial regression coefficient. The beta here is 0.36. It's exactly the same there, 0.36. I'll just read down them, 0.44, same. 0.43, same, 0.7, same. This was produced in AMOS, the, um, article, in the article, this diagram. So these values at above the observed variables are actually R squared values. We don't see R squared values on the Onyx diagram, but we can actually request them by holding over the top of the uh, variable and we can see there. So if we just have a look at one or two, we'll go to the top two. There we are, have 0 0.128, 0 0.19 and 0 0.39. And how does that compare with our diagram here? 0 0.13, 0 0.19, 0 0.39, 0 0.49, 0 0.49, 0 0.39, identical. So we know that bit of the, the model is the same, and if you look at all the rest of it, we'll see it's identical except for one very small area, which I'll mention in a minute. First of all, I just want to say that, as I said, this bit is a confirmatory factor analysis of psychopathy and the four indicators. We've got psychological abuse, which has got two indicators. That's another little mini confirmatory factor analysis. Physical abuse, another little confirmatory factor analysis sexual abuse, another little confirmatory factor analysis. Then in the middle we've got these four latent variables. These four latent variables can be thought of as adding structure to the indicators. And that's why it's called the structural part of the model. We'll just compare this little aspect up here, the top left-hand corner, with the uh, drawing, the SEM diagram in the original article. Here we are. And we can see that the actual values are slightly different. There we've got 0.9 for the regression path between psychological abuse and emotional abuse, isn't it, of the male syndrome caregiver. And we have 0.75 for vicarious abuse from the male. Notice those two are slightly different. It's 0.9 there, 0.75 in the original article, and we have 0.92, 0.72 here. All the rest, you'll find the values are identical. Why is it useful to carry out this technique to replicate someone else's analysis? Well, there might have been mistakes in the actual diagramming in the article. Um, you might want to change some of the relationships based upon um, a new informed uh, model. You might want to consider various redesigning of the structural aspects of the model. Um, you might think that possibly the indicators should be loaded on different latent variables. And you can carry all that out with just the covariance analysis. I hope this short video has shown you how you can recreate some of the more complex analyses in the journals quite easily if you've got a set of covariance measures from the article. Often the article contains a, a matrix of covariances. Um, this one didn't unusually. Bye. We'll now move on to another more complex model.